Flemington Speedway, the most magical, unforgettable, exciting, compelling, filthy, dangerous, loud, eternally mobbed weekly racetrack I ever experienced. Flemington Speedway was a short track located in Flemington, New Jersey, which was once known as being the fastest 5 eighths of a mile dirt track in the United States at the time. For most of the track's existence, it operated as a dirt track, but before that, it was first made into a horse track. It was created during the mid-19th century and hosted horse racing events during their agricultural fair beginning in 18. 1848. By 1911, motorcycles had began racing on the track, but it wasn't until 1915 when it hosted its first automobile race. And from that point on, the racing wouldn't stop there for a very long time. The track's grandstand opened in 1917 and remained standing until the track's demolishment. The track hosted races annually for the Flemington Fair, but it wasn't until 1955 when races became a weekly occurrence. The addition of lights attracted stock car racing, and Saturday night features became a weekly event. The track was reconfigured after the 1966 season into a 5 eighths of a mile, semi-banked rounded rectangle. The track became a rarity from this point on. Not only was it a rectangle oval, but it had four distinct turns. You had to attack each one differently. Combine that with the high speeds the track had produced over the years, you have not only the fastest 5 eighths of a mile dirt track in the entire country, but one of the most exciting yet extremely dangerous tracks all around. You mentioned Pouch, the sportsman champion. Mark Hartman took uh, the rookie. Oh, there's a high flyer. 86. Yeah. Fred oh. Orchard. Hang on, Fred. It'll stop soon. There it is. And Larry Klein uh, in the sportsman division getting the job done for championship honors. His uh, Falcon number 43 has another driver. Goes end for end here. And he won the modified title that year. Newt Hartman. Oh, there's the climber. He's going over. It looks like the car is trying to get back on the track. The track was definitely a beast in its own right, and for many decades, it hosted races like this. For a while, Flemington Speedway was one of the most beloved dirt tracks all across the country, but over time, the locals began to resent it. Local residents and businesses began complaining about the track, but it had enough of a loyal fan base within the community to keep the dirt racing going. But by 1990, that all had to change. And with me is General Manager Rick Cool, son of Paul Cool. And Rick, you've worked with your dad. You're at the track for many years, and you've seen a lot of changes. Uh, you kind of grew up with this track when it was the fastest clay track in the world. And now here it is. We're standing on the new asphalt surface. Uh, what does that change mean to you? Well, Earl, it's, it's been a big change for us uh, in the way the way we, we uh, put races out for the fans and, and, and then going over to asphalt it was a tough decision and a big decision for us. But, uh, but things change and uh, you have to change with the times in order to, to keep going. You can't stay stagnant. And uh, we, saw, we saw it coming where uh, uh, government regulations and uh, problems you know, with the town um, would eventually force us to be an asphalt speedway. So we made the move um, when we could make it on our own terms. Obviously the racing is going to be different when you change a track from dirt to pavement. But when you change the fastest 5 eighths of a mile dirt track into pavement, the end result is dramatically increased speeds. With the racing being the fastest in the track's long history, speeds began leading to a series of horrible wrecks, leaving drivers seriously injured. But the track would be a pioneer in terms of safety. They were one of the first tracks to install foam bricks, which reduced injuries dramatically. During the track's pavement era, they hosted six wheel and modified races from 91 to 98, as well as the modified race of champions from 92 to 95. The biggest series that raced at the track during this era was NASCAR's new one, the NASCAR Super Truck Series. Its inaugural season took place in 1995, 
Flemington Speedway was one of the tracks on the schedule, and from 95 to 98, they hosted NASCAR Super Truck slash Craftsman Truck Series races. Ron Hornaday walked away with the inaugural race victory and won at the track again in 97. Jack Sprague won the second race in 96, but the final race in 98 marked the first career Truck Series victory for Terry Cook. For over 75 years, the fans have sat and many times stood these grandstands cheering on their favorites. They've seen some of the greatest racing ever, and it's been right here at Flemington. And that racing will continue as part of the great tradition of this speedway for many years to come. You could say the track's peak year during the pavement era was in 1998, because after the season was over, NASCAR had announced that they would not return to the facility. The truck series not only was moving to bigger tracks during this time, but rules changes were announced that made it impossible for Flemington Speedway to keep a race. New series rules required live pit stops, and the trucks always took a half-time break using the Flemington infield for tire changes. The track's shape and location didn't allow for the construction of pit stalls, and also you have to remember, all changes have to be approved by the state of New Jersey. Even if the track could make these upgrades, there was no way the state was gonna allow it. It was always considered a weekly racetrack anyway. The Truck Series simply outgrew it. The Truck Series leaving marked the beginning of the end for the track. The last major race it hosted took place in 1999 when Arca raced there, but due to a severe thunderstorm, barely anyone showed up. And since the track was paved in 1990, it continued to lose money throughout the decade. And after the 2000 racing season, the track would seize operations. Up until the end of 2000, Flemington Speedway stood as the oldest operating track to hold weekly racing events. A facility with a deep and rich racing history that dates back all the way to the year 1848 was now left completely abandoned. The Flemington Fair seized its annual operation soon after the closing of the Speedway, and in 2002 when Team Vandals set fire to the fairgrounds office, the track was sold to developers soon after and was demolished in January of 2005. On the property today, you will find a multi-use development. The Rarington Town Center now occupies the surrounding area, with a Lowe's Home Improvement store sitting right on the Speedway property. It's really a symbol that times had changed within the Flemington community. This was a track that was supported for decades and had well over a hundred years of racing history. By the 80s, locals began getting sick of the dirt surface, and then once it was changed the pavement in the 90s, it had soon lost all of its popularity. Today, the track's rich history is preserved by the Flemington Speedway Historical Society. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And the only way you can watch racing on the unique rectangle oval is through NR 2003. Even though it closed more than 20 years ago, Flemington Speedway remains one of the greatest weekly racing short tracks in motorsports history. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.